Hello, this is the first video that I make for the TOEFL preparation course. We're going to be focusing on the TOEFL IBT, the internet-based test. And today, we're going to be discussing about the reading skills. There are four reading skills that we will uh, discuss in this video, and let's check them out. All right, so those five reading skills in TOEFL IPT that we're going to be focusing on today are reading skill five, and that is finding factual information. Factual information is the information that we can find in the reading passage. And then the next one is understanding negative facts, and that is skill six. Negative facts or facts or, um, you know, information that we cannot find in the reading passage. So if factual information is the information that we can find in the reading passage, negative facts or information that cannot be found in the reading passage. So it means that uh, we are going to try to identify the wrong information according to the reading passage. That is negative facts. And then the next skill, reading skill seven, is making inferences from stated facts, making inferences from stated facts. Inferences or in other words for conclusion or deduction. So in this reading skill, we're gonna learn how to make conclusion, how to draw conclusion from the reading passage. And then the last skill that is reading skill eight is inferring rhet rhetorical purposes, inferring rhetorical purposes rhetorical purposes or the reasons or the why you know it's like uh, why the author writes the sentence for example so there's usually a reason for that so we're gonna try to learn about identifying the rhetorical purposes of the writer or the author okay now let's focus on the reading skill five and reading skill six, finding factual information and understanding negative facts. So reading skill five, finding factual information. You're gonna find typical questions in this kind of skill. So the typical types of questions would include phrases like according to paragraph X or according to paragraph blah, 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 and then it is stated in paragraph X, or it might be in the form of, it is indicated in paragraph X, blah, 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 or it might be like this. It is mentioned in paragraph X, blah, blah, blah. So uh, these are the examples of questions in finding factual information in TOEFL IPT. And then how do we answer this kind of question? Because factual information is the information that is found in the reading passage, it means that we need to find the answer from the reading passage. We need to identify the information whether it exists in the reading passage. So how do we answer these types of questions? The first thing that we are gonna need to do is to find or to identify the keyword in the questions and perhaps in the options. So for example, when you read the question, you're going to need to identify certain word or certain phrase that helps you to understand the meaning. And then later, you will use the keywords or the key phrases to find the information in the passage. So it means that you're going to have to skim. To skim is to read quickly and try to get the main idea or to get the important points from the passage by reading quickly. So that is skimming. So we're going to need to skim the text. And of course, we need to find the keyword or the key phrases or the key idea in the passage. And then after we find that part of the passage that contains the keyword or the key uh, phrase, then we're going to need to read the sentence or the sentences carefully. Okay. So we're going to need to read the sentences carefully, the sentences that contain the keywords, because we're going to need to really understand the information in that sentence or in those sentences, okay? So 
after we understand the information from the sentences, then we can choose the best answer. Okay, we can choose the best answer that states the right information according to the part of the passage that we have read. And the next one is reading skill six. Reading skill six is understanding negative facts. And as I have already mentioned, negative facts or information that is wrong according to the reading passage. So we need to find the wrong information according to the reading passage. Wrong information can be information that is not stated or information that is not mentioned, that is not discussed, or that is not true. So usually the questions that ask about negative facts in TOEFL IPT would have these phrases. So the questions might sound like, it is not stated, blah, blah, blah. And then it is not mentioned, blah, blah, blah. It is not discussed, blah, blah, blah. It is not true, or it is not indicated, or it might be in the form of this kind of question. All of the following are true, except blah, blah, blah. So we're going to need to find the choice or the option that is not true, okay? That is negative facts. And then, how do we answer this kind of questions? Well, the strategy would be similar to finding factual information. So finding negative facts has similar strategy to the previous skill that we have learned. How do we do that? First, we're going to need to read the question. And then when we read the question, we're going to need to find a keyword in the question. Okay. And then after we identify the keyword from the question, we're going to need to locate the keyword in the passage. So we need to scan. To scan means to read quickly the passage and find the keyword in it. Okay. So we need to scan the passage and try to find the keyword. And after we find the keyword and identify the part that contains the keyword, then we need to read that part. We need to read the sentence that contains the keyword carefully in order to understand the meaning or the information of that sentence. Okay. And then after that, we're going to need to look for the answers that are definitely true according to the passage and then eliminate those answers. Remember, we're going to need to eliminate those answers, not to choose those answers, okay? Because we need to find the negative facts, the information that is wrong according to the passage. So eliminate any answers that are right or correct according to the passage and then choose the answer that is not true or that is wrong according to the passage. And that is the answer, okay? Now let's get to the examples. Let's start with the reading skill five, finding factual information, information that is true, information that is correct according to the passage, okay? So we always start with the question. So the question here, number four, According to paragraph one, this is paragraph one, by the way, you can see the paragraph number on the left. So the question is, according to paragraph one, the Ocon crevice is blah, blah, blah. So according to paragraph one, the Ocon crevice is blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we have four options here. A, outside of Lake Baikal, and then B, 400 meters below sea level, and then C, the deepest part of the Lake Paikal, and then D, 5,000 meters D. So we're going to need to find the keyword in the question. And what is the keyword? The keyword is, of course, a crevice. So a crevice is the keyword or the key phrase that we can find in the question. And then we're going to need to skim the passage and try to locate where the keyword is, okay? So where is the keyword? The keyword is here, right? A concrevice can be found in this line in the passage, right? And then we're going to need to read the sentence that contains the keyword or the key phrase, okay? So let me read the sentence. The average depth 
of the lake is 1,312 feet or 400 meters below sea level. And the Ocon crevice, the lowest known point, is more than 5,250 feet or 1,600 meters deep. Okay, so that is the sentence that contains the keyword. Now you can pause the video and try to answer this question. Try to choose A, B, C, or D. Okay, how can we choose the right answer according to this? Of course, we need to understand the information stated in that sentence, right? So according to the information stated in the sentence, we're going to find that Ocon crevice is actually the lowest known point. The, lo the lowest known point of what? It is actually the lowest known point of the lake, right? But which lake? Then we're going to need to read some previous sentences preceding this sentence, okay? And the lake here must not be the Great Lakes, right? Because we're talking about the lake. And the lake is one lake. It's a singular noun. There's only one lake that we're talking about here. So it must not be the Great Lakes because lakes means more than one lake, right? There are actually five Great Lakes. So uh, the lake here is not Great Lakes, right? So what is the lake here? The lake refers to the pronoun it, right? In this sentence. And what is it? In this sentence, the word it or the pronoun it refers to Lake Baikal, as we can read in the first sentence. So from this, we know that Ocon Crevice is the lowest known point of Lake Baikal. Okay. And what is the answer? The right answer would be C, because the lowest known point is another word for the deepest part. The lowest known point is another phrase or another words for the deepest part, okay? And then, uh, as we know, Ocon Crevice is the lowest known point or the deepest part of Lake Baikal. And therefore, C is the right answer. That's how we find the right answer in factual information type of question, okay? So... In TOEFL IBT, we do not expect to find the exact same words in the options. Usually, the options will be a restatement of the information that we read in the passage. So do not expect to find the exact same words in the options, okay? Moving on to the example of reading skill 6, understanding negative facts. Remember, negative facts are information that is wrong according to the passage, okay? So, again, we start with the question. So let me read the question for you. According to the passage, it is not true that sand depths and flounders, blah, 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 okay? According to the passages, it is not true that sand depths and flounders, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what are the keywords or what is the keyword? The keywords are, of course, sand depths and flounders, right? So sand depths and flounders are the keywords. Now let's try to find, let's try to scan the passage and find the keywords in the passage, okay? So where are the keywords? The keywords is here, right? So the keywords can be, can be found in the first line. Sand depths and flounders. Okay, you can pause the video and then try to identify the right answer, okay? Whether it's A, have flattened bodies, whether it's B, live along the ocean floor, whether it's C, live in the deepest part of the ocean, or whether it's D, live along the continental shelf. So which one is the right answer? If we have a look at the passage, we're going to know that sand depths and flounders are types of flatfish family. So we know that sand depths and flounders are examples or types of fish. 
Specifically, there are types of flatfish, right? And then from the underlined information, we know that sand depths and flounders have flattened bodies, right? So they have flattened bodies, okay? Because they are flatfish. And then they are well suited to live along the ocean floor. So it means that they can live along the ocean floor. And then they also live along the ocean floor of the continental shelf. So it means that they can live or they tend to live uh, around the continental shelf. And then another information is this. So sand depths and flounders live along the ocean floor in the shallower areas, okay? In the shallower areas of the continental shelf. Now, which one is the right answer? The right answer would be C. And what is the reason? Because C here, it is mentioned that sand depths and flounders live in the deepest part of the ocean. Now, it is mentioned in the passage that sand depths and flounders live in the shallower areas. Shallower areas are areas that are not deep. Shallow is the opposite of deep, right? So shallow is the antonym of deep. It means that sand depths and flounders do not live in the deepest part of the ocean because they actually live in the shallower areas, not in the deepest part. And then we know that Sand depths and flounders have flattened bodies, and it means that A is right or correct. And then we also know that sand depths and flounders live or can live along the ocean floor, and it means that B is also correct. And then uh, we also know that sand depths and flounders live around the continental shelf, and it means that D is also correct. Sand depths and flounders live along the continental shelf. So the wrong information according to the passage would be C, and it makes C the right answer that we need to choose. Yeah. So for this question, the answer would be C, because it's not the right information according to the passage. That is negative fact. Okay, after reading skills, five and six, we're gonna continue with reading skill seven. So reading skill seven is about making inferences from stated facts. Inferences are conclusions or deduction that we can draw from the passage, from the part of the passage, okay? So how do we answer these kinds of questions? Well, we're gonna need to identify the questions first. Usually making inferences from stated facts type of question would have these phrases. So you might find those questions uh, seeming like this. It is implied in paragraph X, blah, blah, blah. Or it can be inferred from paragraph X, blah, blah, blah. Or it is most likely that blah, blah, blah. Or what probably happened, blah, blah, blah. So those are examples of the questions that ask about making inferences from stated facts, okay? And then how do we answer those types of questions? First, we're gonna need to find a keyword or phrase in the question. So again, it's quite similar to the previous skills, right? We're gonna need to read the question and then find the keyword or the phrase, uh, the key phrase in the question. And then after that, we're gonna need to scan the passage for the keyword or the phrase so we're going to need to locate the keyword or the phrase in the passage. And then, of course, we're going to need to read the part that contains the keywords or the phrases uh, in the passage and then try to understand the information in that part, right? And then after we understand the information in the part of the passage, then we can, you know, try to draw conclusions, try to make inferences from the information in the passage. So drawing conclusions or making inferences is something that sets this skill apart from the previous two skills, yeah? It is something that distinguishes this skill from the previous two skills because in skill seven, 
we're gonna need to make inferences. We're gonna need to draw conclusions based on the information in the passage. Okay, so let's get to the example. All right, let me read the question for you because we always start from the question. So the question is, what would most likely happen to a predator that wanted to eat a tiger moth, okay? So what is the keyword from this question? The keywords would be a predator and then tiger moth. So we have two keywords here, predator and tiger moth. And then let's try to identify or locate the keywords in the passage. So where are they located? We can find the keywords in this clause, right? So in this clause, we find tiger moths. And then we also find predators in this next clause. Yeah, so there are two clauses here that we can identify containing the keywords. So the first clause is this, tiger moth. And then the second clause is this, predators. And then we're going to need to read the whole sentence containing those keywords, okay? So let me read the first sentence for you. One of the most beautiful of the more than 100,000 known species in the order Lepidoptera are the tiger moths, moths known for the striking appeal of their distinctive coloration, okay? So we know that tiger moths have some sort of distinctive coloration. So they have distinctive colors and you know the colors are appealing, the colors are beautiful to see, right? So tiger moths have distinctive coloration. And then the next sentence, the next clause containing predat predators. So let me read it for you. Such boldly patterned color combinations are commonplace in the animal world. So it means that such coloration can be found in many animals. And then uh, we know that the coloration serving the function of forewarning potential predators, okay? So we know that the function of the coloration of the tiger moths is to forewarn, is to give warning potential predators. So if we are asked to make inferences, if we are asked to draw a conclusion from these two clauses, then we can know that the conclusion would be this, option D, right? The predator would back away from it because if the coloration forewarns potential predators, it means that the predators would likely be backing away from it, yeah? So if the predators see the coloration of the, you know, tiger moths, it will likely or they will likely to back away from it. So they will stay away from it because they know from the colors that tiger moths are, you know, dangerous to eat, for example. So yeah, the right option would be D. So we're going to need to, you know, draw a conclusion from the information in the passage. And that is uh, reading skill seven. And next, reading skill eight. Reading skill eight is inferring rhetorical purposes. Now, inferring rhetorical purposes is the same as identifying the reasons of the writer or the author of why they write certain sentences in the passage, okay? So typical phrases that we usually find in the questions is, you know, phrases like this. Why does the author blah, blah, blah? And then you may also find questions like, the author mentions X in order to blah, blah, blah. So those are typical forms of questions that ask about inferring rhetorical purposes, okay? So uh, how do we answer these types of questions? Of course, we're gonna need to study the highlighted information carefully. So usually in the question, 
we will be provided with highlighted information. Okay, so we need to read the highlighted information carefully. And then we're gonna need to find or locate the highlighted information in the passage, of course. And after we find the highlighted information in the passage, then we're gonna need to read the context. The context means the surrounding sentences around it, okay? So we're gonna need to read the context around the highlighted information in the passage. And then we need to ask ourselves how the highlighted information is related to the context around it, okay? And then again, uh, we need to draw a conclusion from uh, the, the context. And then based on the conclusion uh, that we draw from the context, then we can read the answer choices and eliminate any definitely wrong answers. And of course, we can choose the best answer from the remaining choices. And that's how we answer this type of questions. Now let's get to the example. And this is the last example, by the way. Uh, we have this question. The author places the phrase small grains to which dry ink adheres in parentheses in order to blah, blah, blah. So this is the highlighted information. Small grains to which dry ink adheres. That is the highlighted information. And we're gonna need to locate this highlighted information in the passage, of course. So where is it located? It's located here, right? So we know that the highlighted information is actually written in parentheses. So these are parentheses, okay? And then we're gonna need to read the sentence which contains the highlighted information. And the sentence would be, as a result of the conductivity, the drum uh, loses its charge in the lighted areas. And toner, small grains to which dry ink adheres, attaches itself only to the darker parts of the image. So the function of parenthesis is usually to give further information about the previous unit. And what is the previous unit before the parenthesis? The previous unit is actually toner, right? So what is the right answer? What do you think is the right answer? Try to pause the video and then choose the right answer, whether it's A, or provide information that contradicts the previous statement, or whether it's B, provide it or provide in another example of conductivity, or is it C, provide further detailed information about toner, or is it D, provide an alternate explanation for the effectiveness of toner? Which one is the right answer? The right answer would be C, because, you know, uh, the highlighted information is written in parentheses, right? So it means that it provides further detail information about toner. So toner is small grains to which dry ink adheres. That's how we understand the rhetorical purpose of why the writer writes this highlighted you know, information. So the right answer is C. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope that you understand all the four reading skills that we have scrutinized in this video. So we have learned reading skill five, reading skill six, reading skill seven, and reading skill eight in TOEFL IBT. If you have any questions, you can write your question in the comment section down below.